Okay. So, what is left to really prove here? Part one. If f prime is uh, is continuous, is there any issue with uh, statement one? No, we proved that if it's continuous, it's uh, the Hilbert integral exists. So the only the only really the thing left to prove here is this statement number two. So how should we do that? This is where he leaves out a lot of stuff. Well, what do we know? Uh, from part one, we know the Cauchy integral exists. So, for any sufficiently small partition, how does he write this? He writes it with the partition below here. So the, the, the understanding is this: these are partition points determined by some selection uh, p. And I do the f. Well, no, sorry, capital F this time. Capital F prime. It's, it's the capital F prime. It's Cauchy integral. So we we write this and we take away the uh, Cauchy integral. And for a suitably small mesh, we can make that difference less than absolute, right? So that's going to be true. I guess he, we're going to need another delta. So we'll call that a delta 1. So for suitably small delta, if the partition is finer than that, the difference between any Cauchy sum over such a partition and the limit, the Cauchy integral, is less than a free sign of So we have that. Now, uh, what else? What's he doing here? Um, okay. F prime is continuous. So by Highness theorem, it's uniformly continuous. So given this self-same epsilon here, we can find we can find a delta two of epsilon. It doesn't depend on a point, it's just any point in A B is a work point, right? Uh, the variation in capital F prime over a subinterval will be no greater than this. So um, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Whenever, whenever the values in a subinterval are in the same subinterval, the variation of the function between those two values is less than epsilon, provided that the partition has norm less than delta two of epsilon. Okay. So this one, this one we get because we know it's Cauchy integral, and the other one we get because of uniform continuity. Okay. Now, here's the tricky part. Here's the tricky. I, I want to establish this this thing up here. So what I do is I write that thing. Down. I would like, I would like, I'm done if I can show that that's less than epsilon. Right? If I can show that that is less than epsilon, then I can equate this with f of x minus f of a. And that's exactly this, this thing. Now, I claim that this can be written as a telescoping sum. Okay, how would I do that? Well, if I go from 1 to uh, n, right. f of f of uh, xk minus f of x of k minus 1. Just stop and think what that sum really is. Isn't it, isn't it that? The nth xk, x, xn is b, or x, right? xn is x, but I'm thinking going all the way to b, but I'm going to any x, any intermediate. The last point in the interval of integration here is, is, is x, and it would be the nth one. This is the one just prior to here. 
the term the sum in just before this one is cap capital F sub X of K minus 1 minus capital F sub X of K minus 2. We add those two things together, what do you get? You save the top guy, throw away the middle guy, and subtract the bottom guy. All right? So you keep doing that. What happens? The top guy never goes away. All the middle ones get wiped out. Who gets left? The guy on the bottom with a negative sign. But who's the guy at the bottom? Capital left of A, right? See that's in these telescope. You have this minus this, plus this minus this, plus this minus this. Stuff those all together, what's the result? This, there's a plus and minus for everybody in between, minus the low guy. Right? Okay. So this thing is really expressible as a sum uh, over, the, over the partition points. Okay. So now we do another tricky thing. We add and subtract the same thing. So I'm going to take away the sum from k equals 1. Uh, this just seems kind of off the wall, but I'll show you what's going on. That's, uh, that's uh, going to be a Cauchy sum, right? This is a Cauchy sum. This isn't. This is a telescoping sum. It equals this. This is a Cauchy sum that I'm taking away. I'll add it right back in. So no harm done. He's back. And then I'm going to take away the thing that I claim this is equal to the Cauchy integral of f prime of t. So this expression now has become this thing. This by telescoping, this by addition and subtraction, and this is just bringing up the rear here. Okay?
I'm picking, I'm picking a delta that is the minimum, the minimum of these two. This delta ensures that any Cauchy sum with the mesh less than delta one is no more than epsilon away from the interval. This delta ensures that the variation of the function on any subinterval is not more than epsilon. So I take the minimum of these two, so if I keep the norm of the partition below the minimum, both things happen. Right? 